Matthew. And this video tackles a topic we've talked about before, but the contract is updated, so it's a little different now. And the question is, should a listing agent or seller submit to the buyer a notice saying, we demand you show us lender approval on day X, whatever day X is in the contract that's been entered into financial contingency? And the short answer is probably not. Under the old contract, what would happen is if I sent you over the notice, if I, the listing agent or the seller, said, hey, buyer, you put 21 or 20 days in your finance contingency and we're on day 22, I want to see full lender commitment for this financing. And under the old contract, if they did not respond at all or could not present it, the contract automatically terminated in three days. Under the new paragraph, the contract doesn't... Uh, the contract doesn't terminate automatically in the three days, but it does give the buyer the right to say, we're out of here. Now, why would the buyer do that? Well, if they don't respond to your notice or your demand letter, they lose the protection of the contingency unless they terminate. So you have essentially taken that buyer, put them in a corner and said, either you lose your protections, which are critically important because you never know what's going to happen, or you must terminate the contract. Those are your two options. And then the question is, is a informal email to the buyer saying, hey, we want to see the full lender commitment under paragraph such and such of the contract, does it constitute notice? Maybe. I think I can argue that it may not because it does require an official notice, which requires your seller to sign it. But so many weird things are going on now in the real estate world, and courts are actually saying that our text and email could be construed as a demand or element of the contract perpetuating it forward. So I don't think that I would send over that email. What's the benefit to the seller? The only benefit that I can think of to the seller is if they've one of two things. They, they just had enough. Buyer, go away. We don't want you to buy our house anymore. You've been a pain in the butt, and I have no more interest in working with you. Or two, buyer, I've got this really good backup offer over here, and I think they're going to come through, and it's going to be better. So if you can't prove that you're ready to move forward here, we're terminating, or we're going to force you to terminate or move forward without the protection of the contingency. It, absent those two elements, absent a seller who's just had it, and they no longer want to work with the buyer, or that they have a backup offer, there is really no value to the seller to start to demand or send notice to the buyer that they should give up that finance contingency or submit an approval. Most of us know that, generally speaking, you're not gonna get full lender commitment and approval until one or two days before closing. It just rarely ever happens. So if we know that to be true, then probably go easy on the finance contingency demand letters. And again, as always, if you have any other questions or problems or comments, go to your manager. They'll be happy and able to work you through those problems. Thanks so much.